Good morning. Good morning. Okay, guys, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to probability and statistics for first period B day. So for the seniors, we are gradually moving much more closer to the end zone. So we shall be rounding up things gradually, but we are not there yet. It is not over until it's over. So what do I mean by that? You cannot just say, oh, we just have two weeks or three weeks and, and because of that, you stop working. No, this is actually when you should put in the best effort possible so that one day or two days will not damage the great work you have done previously. Once again, probability and statistics is a, a one semester course. So which means your final. So I was saying that uh, once again, uh, probability and statistics is a one semester course, which means your final grade is determined by um, adding your third quarter and the fourth quarter uh, grade and dividing it by two. In other words, your fourth quarter could boost your grade from B to A or from C to B or from D to C or whatever, but it could also lower your grade depending on how you perform. You could drop it from A to B or B to C. I don't think you want that to happen. So before we continue, uh, kindly unmute yourself and say hello, everyone, everybody. Make some noise. I need to hear your voice, everybody. Hello, Good morning. Hello. Good morning. Hi. Good morning. Walter, Johnny, Vivian. I haven't heard your voice. What's going on? Carmen, Marika, Gusola. I said good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So good morning. Are, are we good? Good morning. Yeah, and you? Very good. Very good. So um, so with us today is a special guest that is coordinating a program that uh, Bowie State University is running with PGCPS. So um, please welcome Dr. Terry Showers. She's in our midst today. Good morning, everyone. And it is a pleasure to be with you. And I'm looking forward to hearing excellent remarks and comments come from you. Good morning, Ms. Akawando, too. Thank you. Good morning, Ms. Augustine. So Ms. Augustine has been with us for a Good while. Morning. So students are very much familiar and aware of his presence. So he's my colleague and we shall be working together for a while too. So having said that, so just for a general reminder, we are going to do about two or three activities. Participation is required. If your mic is not working, please use the chat box. The bottom line is you have to communicate. You have to tell us something. We have to tell you something. We have to discuss. That's the bottom line. Okay. We may watch video. We are going to read a test. The aim of all those is to meet the topic objective, which is to learn and understand the conditional probability and how to apply it to solving real world problems. To learn and understand conditional probability and how to apply it to solve real world problems. So that's the topic for today. And uh, one more thing that we have to do today, because today is basically the last day we have to do this, that's a final review of your capstone project. Final review of your capstone projects. So um, that's going to take us about five minutes. It's going to take us about five minutes. And then thereafter, we will now switch to our topic. Does that make sense? Is there any concern on this? Any comment on this? So I'm going to share my screen and go straight to your uh, Google Classroom. So it was uh, the capstone. Where is it? View more application of sampling. Okay, there you go. Okay, so uh, I need a volunteer who wants us to uh, look at their document. 
if I don't get any volunteer, I'm going to Next to you. You can look at mine. Uh, first name, please. Vivian. Vivian. Okay. Uh, Vivian. Okay. Let's go to your document. Everybody, pay attention. This is the last review we are going to do on this. Okay. So take note of any possible correction or comment. Okay, so this is a uh, Vivian's uh, capstone project. It has the right topic, which is uh, probability stroke statistics and capstone uh, with a good image that represents mathematics by Vivian submitted to Mr. Cable doing so. This one is good. All right, and the table of content. Um, Okay, table of content looks good as well. Introduction, okay. Introduction is right there, problems and solutions. So this one, we have to change it to just problems and solutions because there are some of these problems that when we, we did not solve in class. So some of the ones that I gave you, which you researched about. So let's just leave it at problems and solutions. And then you have to come back to, um, the table of content and also leave it as problems and solutions. And yeah, so this was the research. Vivian, which one was the, okay, I dare you guys found it. So everybody pay attention to this, this one. This was the sampling method that every, I asked you to do, which um, you use your social media to gather your data. Now here's the assignment that I want you to do on it, so you need to calculate, um, let me just write it assignment, hold on please. Okay, assignment, so then I will say calculate, calculate the relative frequency of all the, of all the categories, okay, so, for example, uh, in Vivian's own case, uh, she's going to calculate, Vivian, there's a discrepancy here. Uh, what, what is it, Mr. You? Yes, that's what I'm about to point out right now. You see, in this place, you wrote percentage. In one of them, you wrote decimal. So you have to write everything in decimal or fraction, and then you calculate the relative frequency. So you cannot be mixing in the data, you cannot be mixing decimal and and uh, and uh, percentage at the same time or, or numbers am i making sense yes i forgot to put um the the percentage on the other ones that's why but I okay so I, I, you have to put it in put it in a decimal or physical number use your real the real number that you gathered and yes. then and then relative frequency is actually about finding percentage yes okay so everybody take note of this correction that i just made so you have to use either who, either the, the numbers you got or in, uh, in fraction, then you calculate the relative frequency for all, all the categories. Okay. Mr. You, so that means do I have to round the numbers up because I did that? You, you yes, collected the data. So write, use the, the real data that you collected, like how many boys... How many boys use this Uber? How many girls use this Uber? How many boys use this Lyft? How many girls? So use the real number. Okay. Use the real number, not the percentage, not the decimal. So now okay. it is on the relative frequency. That's when you get the decimal. All right. All right. Hmm? You see, so the real number right here is, uh, you see, Uber. All right. Anyway, um, what else do I want to say? Okay, this looks good. All right, so this is good. So uh, Vivian, make the correction and then the same thing applies to everyone. The same thing applies to everyone. Any question before I move on? Any question regarding this? This is the final review for this uh, capstone project. I'm not gonna do this again. Wait, what should go on the introduction page? What do you... Uh... So since we started doing this project, so what do you think uh, you should tell somebody about the project? About the project, about probability, about statistics? So that's what the introduction should contain. So, but should it just like contain like, like just like certain things like what you just said, like the word, uh, like some like important things about like sampling? Yes. Or like 
but like just like certain like sentences it, or should it be like an essay style it, it should be like uh, two or three paragraphs that tell somebody about the project and the basic thing in the project in some and then wait so then the so then what would the essay be the what essay is, is the essay is a different topic the essay says write all the things you learned in the class and how to apply them so you cannot do all those things in an introduction introduction can just be two uh, two paragraphs or at most okay you see uh, vivian wrote about two uh, she she described probability she described statistics as well so that's fine any other comment before i move on this is the last review for this okay so if there's no comment on this then i have to move on Okay, so um, now the next thing we are going to do, let's write the topic first. I hope my writing tablet is working today. Yesterday I was disappointed. I'll give it uh, 30 seconds to load, or uh, one minute. So now we are going to do a very, first of all, let's start with topic. Topic is conditional. We can't see anything. Oh, I'm sorry. Can you see it now? Conditional pro probab probability. And uh, before you write anything, make sure you have written your name, class period, date, and then the topic. And here is the warm up. Here's the warm up. And you have about three minutes to finish this warm up. Okay. So uh, the following data consists of uh, students who are in the school team. So please, you have two minutes, uh, I'm sorry, three minutes to answer the two questions. So what percentage of girls play tennis? And what percentage of boys are in the team? Okay, so this is uh, Duval data, Duval High School. You have three minutes and the three minutes starts right now. Uh, so which means this thing is due at um, 902, actually 901. Mr. You, I can, oh, thank you. Yeah, go ahead. Now, just not done with the um, putting in the numbers. Mr. You, can you please zoom out? What percentage of boys are in the what? What do you want me to do? Zoom out. You you can see it. Is that what you want? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Does that say what percentage of boys are in the team? Yes. So the uh, the data is about um boys and girls who are in school team. So um, sports. who are in, in the, you can call it sports team. That's a team, team. Sorry about my writing. Uh, you can call it sports team. You have one more minute. Though it's 9.01, but I, I give you one more minute. 30 more seconds, 10 seconds. Okay, um, let's get back together, ladies and gentlemen. So let's get back together and I'll be calling names randomly. And um, if I say volunteer, you are free to do so. Just mention your first name so that we know who is speaking. So um, let's review the let's review the assignments. So when you are given this type of problem, what do you what's the first thing you need to do? I need volunteer now before I call a name. Um when you're given this type, yeah, sum up, basically add up every number to its total. So the girls, you add up 25 plus 15 plus 23, all the um the sports they play, and then the grand total at the okay. end of the line. Vivian, Vivian made a suggestion. Who agrees with her? I agree. Okay, she said, uh, so now, when, uh, who said, uh, Johnny, you say you agree. So what are we supposed to add first? Um, I'll say, well, you could do either one, but I added the total of the sports teams. So I added 25 girls, 30 boys equals 55. 55. Okay. So um, you said this is 55. Next person, next person. So who else wants to help? Everybody must say something. The next one is 27. The next one is 27. And the next one is 47. Uh, 47. Next person. 
somebody that is not Mohammed, that is not Vivian, that is not um, uh, Johnny. This is 47. Walter, you wanted to say something. Go ahead. Yeah, the total amount of girls are 63 and the total amount of boys are 66. 63 and 66, you said? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now what's the grand total? Vivian, you, you mentioned grand total. What is that? Oh, the grand total is all the sports added up and 55 plus 27 plus 47. What and does that give you? It gave me 129. 129. Yes. So now when you added uh, 63 and 66, is it also 129? Actually, oh, no, no, no. Wait, 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 let me see what I did. Let me go. 63, 66. Oh, yes, it gives you 129 too. So that means it's correct. Yes. Okay, next person that is not Vivian, that is not Walter, that is, um, okay, I'm gonna go for Micah, go ahead. So what's the percentage of uh, boys that are in the sports team, Micah? 51%. Uh, you said 51%? Yes. So how did you get that number? Uh, is that a miracle or something? <laughs> how did you get the number? I had it. The total number of girls plus the total number of boys. Yes. And I divided 66. I had the total. Okay, 66. So you said you did percentage of boys. Boys percentage, you say you did 66 divided by what? 129. And then what does that give you? 51%. Okay, so you, yeah, I believe you multiply with 100, uh, by 100 as well, right? Yeah. Okay, so this multiplied by 100, and that gives us uh, six, how many again? 51. 51%. Okay, next, next person, who wants to go? To answer to the first question. Hold on. Yeah, uh, what percentage of girls play tennis? Yeah, go ahead. Um, 55%. A first name, please. Carmen. Carmen, okay. So how do you get the number, please? I um I divided with I divided 15 by 27 and I got 55%. Okay. So girls who play the um you can say we can say um percentage of girls who play tennis is uh so she said uh, tennis is 27, so that would be 15 over 27, she said, times 100 over 1. And what's the number again? 55%. 55%. Okay, thank you. Mr. You? Yes? Aren't you supposed to um, add, isn't is you supposed to multiply the, uh, the 27 times the total, grand total, which is 129, and divided by 100? To get that percentage, or you can do it that way. So um, we are. Fo he is focusing on tennis. Oh, tennis. Oh, okay. Focusing on tennis. You can see this is girls right here. I hope you can see my mouse. The movement of my mouse. Yes. So you can see uh, girls. If you go straight on girls, you get fifteen. Then that's where you have tennis. So now under tennis. So the total players of tennis is twenty-seven. Yes. So the percentage of the girls that play tennis is 15 over 27. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you. Wait, right. so you weren't doing it, the percentage of girls that play tennis, like say, so there's 63 girls and 15 play tennis. I thought that's how you meant it. Like the percentage of girls that play tennis. Hold on, hold on, hold on. That's a good perspective. Uh, hold on. Uh, what percentage of girls play tennis? Yes, actually, Wuta is right. Wuta is right. So in terms of girls, though, the question, the question is not perfectly framed. But you can also, when you are considering girls only, when you are considering girls only, so you have uh, in tennis, 15 of them play tennis and out of a total of um, 63 girls. Okay, so the question, the question is a little bit faulty. So we will need to rephrase it, but that's fine. So Walter has a point. So when we are considering girls only, girls only, so it should also be 
15 divided by uh, uh, 63, and then you get the tennis uh, players of girls. All right? Anyway, so this gives us a good introduction to the test that we are about to read right now. And remember, the essential question that we must answer as we go along is called essential question is, how is, write down this question, because that's what we're about to answer eventually. So how is, how are conditional probability and um, independent event related in real world? Related in real world experiment. So this is the key question that we we need to answer in order to achieve uh, today's objective. It's called the uh, essential question. Essential question. Once we are able to answer this, then our objective is met. So now I'm going to share another screen right now, which um, I'm going to stop this. So I'll go back to your Google Classroom and um, uh, hold on. So conditional for probability. So I uploaded this document. So um, we are going to read it right now and we, we are going to read turn by turn. So make sure that you're looking at the screen at the same time, because once I call you, you are going to start from where the, the, last, the last reader stopped. So at some point I will stop and then we will do a brief discussion Either I, I make some comment or I ask you to make a comment or answer a question and then we continue. Okay. So who wants to go first? Mark Hedin, go. I'll go first. Mark Hedin. Mark, are you there? Um, yeah, Eloho, go. I'm here. I'm here. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead. So start from essential question and then read example one, please. Thank you. How are conditional probability and independence related in real world experiments? Understand conditional probability. A student committee is being formed to decide how after school activities will be funded. The committee members are selected at random from current club members. The frequency table shows the current club members data. What is the probability that a member of the art club selected at random is a junior? Thank you. So now, if we take a look at this frequency table, it looks like the one we just did using our using the uh, warm up. Is that correct? So now this time around, our job is to um, use probability instead of statistics to analyze this data. Okay. So next person, Eloho, continue from where he stopped. You want me to start from um, one method? Yes, where he, st he stopped at, what's the probability that a member of the art club selected at random is a junior? So now the, uh, the description below is going to help us to answer the question. So start from there, one method, go. Use the frequency table to find the probability that the student chose chosen as a junior, given that the student is a member of the art club. The probability, wait, I can't see it. Oh. The probability that an event B will occur, occur, given that another event A has already occurred is called a conditional probability. And it's written as, how do you say that, Mr. Ukebo? Conditional probability. So it is written as, uh, the probability yeah, that. of B, that is the probability that B is what they are looking for if mm -hmm. A has occurred. The probability of B to A. Yeah, go ahead. So, so uh, continue. The probability of a junior that's a member of art club is? Um, oh. Number of juniors in an art club over total number of art club members yes hold on guys so me, hold on hold, hold. yeah hold on you see so now here is the junior right here and then here is the art club so a total of 58 students are in art club and a total of um 
uh, uh, juniors that are in art club is 16. So go ahead. Another method use another method use the formula for conditional prob probability. Any two events A and B with A equals with probability of A uh, yeah. equals probability of B. Hold on, hold on. Probability of A not equal to zero. Yeah, continue. So that's the probability of B and A. And it's given like the probability of B and A. Remember what I told you about probability and. The and, the and. The word and in probability has a special meaning. It, it denotes multiplication. So whenever they say probability and, B and A, it denotes multiplication. So go ahead. Where do you want me to start? Yes, yeah, so, so, yeah, the, so the probability of uh, B and A divide by the probability of A. So now here, this is how they solved it out. So the probability that something uh, of a junior in art club is the probability of junior in the entire club. Uh, mute yourself now, let me take over. Thank you. Thank you, uh, thank you, uh, uh, Eloho, thank you. So the probability of um, junior in art club is uh, represented by Probability of uh, junior, look, which is this? Look at it. Probability of junior in art club. So they are considering the entire club. Here is the junior right there, which is 16. So, and that's why they did 16 over 115. Divide by the probability of those in art club, which is the total in art club over 15. So that's how they got this one. So now when you, simplify everything when you simplify everything it is still going to give you eight over over 29 now looking at this test you may not discover this let's let's see let's see there's one something i want to show you right now they wrote they wrote 16 over is it 16 over what is it 115 divide by 58 over 115 right so this can also be written as 16 over 115 divide by 58 over 115. Now, who remembers KCL? Who remembers that? What does that mean? Keep change flip. Keep Is that right? Change, keep change flip. Thank you. So keep, which one do you keep? Which, keep, which keep, of them keep, do you keep? 16 over 115. You First flip. one, which is uh, 16 over 115. And then you change what? Uh, 115 over 58. You change the, the multiply, operation. Multiply by 115 over 58. One, one, and then you flip the other one, 115 over 58. And then, which eventually gives you what? 16 keep over 58. Keep. All right? Thank you. Thank you. Now, we are going to hold on to that. Let's watch a brief video regarding conditional probability. Let's watch a, a brief video con uh, regarding conditional probability. So I'm going to share another screen. I'm we're going to hold on to this. So now let's watch this video. The town of Baysville has a population of 2,000 people. Jimmy is worried after reading a news article about a disease called conditionitis. Conditionitis is a serious but rare disease afflicting 1% of the population. Let's represent healthy people as blue and diseased people as orange. Jimmy decides to go to the doctor to get tested. Unfortunately, Jimmy tests positive for the disease. In other words, the test says that he has conditionitis. We will represent positive test results with yellow hats. Could the test be wrong? Well, the test is 95% accurate. What does this mean for Jimmy? Note that there are two ways this test could be wrong. A person could test positive for the disease when they don't have it, or they could test negative when they do have the disease. There are also two ways that the test could be right. A person who has the disease could test positive, 
or a person who does not have the disease could test negative. Suppose that 95% accurate means if a person has conditionitis, then 95% of the time they will test positive, which would be the correct diagnosis. If the person does not have conditionitis, then 95% of the time they will test negative, which again would be the correct diagnosis. In other words, there is a 5% chance of misdiagnosis in each case. Given this information, how sure are you that Jimmy has the disease? A, he almost certainly has the disease. B, he probably has the disease. C, it's about 50-50 whether he has the disease. Or D, he probably does not have the disease. Let's imagine that we conduct the test for every single person in Baysville and assign each person who tests positive for conditionitis a yellow hat. Recall that healthy people are represented as blue, diseased people are represented as orange, and a yellow hat represents a positive test result. Since the test is not 100% accurate, some of the people who get hats probably don't actually have conditionitis. The combination of the test results and the true disease status classifies our population into four groups. True negatives, or healthy individuals who are correctly tested as negative, true positives, or diseased individuals who are correctly tested as positive, false negatives, or diseased individuals who are incorrectly tested as negative, and false positives, or healthy individuals who are incorrectly tested as positive. If we just look at the negative results, our test seems pretty good. After all, it only missed one diseased person. However, looking at the positive test results, we find that a large majority of the positive test results are actually false alarms. This is good news for Jimmy. His positive test result does increase his chance of being diseased, but with so many false positives, it turns out that there's only a 16% chance he's actually sick. There's an 84% chance he does not have conditionitis. So Jimmy stops panicking, but decides to get a second opinion, just in case. Did you make the right prediction? In general, we need to take into account the rarity of a disease, not just the accuracy of a test. And we need to distinguish between the probability of having a disease given that you test positive and the probability that you test positive given that you have the disease. Okay. Thank you guys. Let's come back together and just talk about a few things that we learned from the video. Who wants to go first? Katli. Katli, are you there? Okay, who wants to go first? What are the basic things that we learned from that video? How can you relate that video to what is currently happening in COVID-19? Um, I would say that there's people who say they have it, so that's like the amount, you know, who has the symptoms and stuff like that. But when they're post, when they're um, tested, they get a negative test back, but though they have the symptoms and they're sick. And and there's there's some who are tested and they don't have the, what you call it? <laughs> who don't have the no symptoms, but they and the test comes out positive. Mm -hmm. and, then, and there's a, a few percent who actually have the symptoms and they're tested and actually they actually are sick. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Vivian. What? So um, who else wants to go? Busola. Busola, are you still in this class? Yes. Yeah, so what, what did you learn from this video? How can we relate the video to what is currently happening? If we are learning all these things and then we are not applying them to real life situations, that means we are not learning anything. So we have to, whatever we learn, we have to think about how we can use it in the real world. And that's actually the reason for that particular video. You see, people are being tested. We are at home just because of what they call COVID-19 and people are being tested. Some people are testing positive, some are testing negative and some tested positive, but they don't actually have symptoms and stuff like that. 
and it is affecting our various communities. So now what they are saying is, so you can actually use probability to determine the accuracy of the tests that are being run. And uh, once you make that determination, that is how resources are moved to various places where there is need, including hospitalization and stuff like that. Okay? So um, uh, you may have to rewatch the video later on. I'm going to post it. I'm going to post it on Google Classroom so that you can rewatch it. And then I will, I will uh, write some specific questions that everybody needs to answer. Does that sound good? So now let's move on to our reading now. This is going to be a private reading. So I'm going to give you five minutes. You will read another section of this test privately. And then we come back with a question that you need to answer. So you are going to read uh, page, um, you are going to read page um, 600 and, okay, let me just share the screen. Let me just share the screen. So I will go out of this place. Hold on, hold on. I need to close some of this stuff. Okay, so you are going to read by yourself page 6, 14 and 615. So I'm going to give you five minutes. Everybody read by yourself, independent reading. Start from where it says um, conditional probability and independent invent. We can't see your screen. Okay. Even if you open the document, okay, let me share my screen again. Sorry about that. So I will share the screen. So you need to start from here. Open it from your own end. It's on Google Classroom. Start from where it says, this is page 614. Start from this place. Concept, conditional probability and independent invent. Then read all the way to page um, 615, just two pages. And note some of the important things that probably you did not quite understand so that when we come back, we'll be able to address it. All right, so start from here. Concept, conditional probability, and independent events. You are reading privately, and then your five minutes starts right now. So I'm gonna come back to you at 9, 9.36, 9.36. Do you need more time, or do we come back together? Hello? I, said, I, you was, just reading, I was just reading. Um, you are reading with two pages. I want everybody to read it independently. Now, my question is, do you need more time to read or uh, do you want us to come back together? A little more time. Like how many minutes? Like two or three minutes. Okay, two. let's let's give two, min two more minutes. Okay, guys, uh, let's talk about this a little bit. Let's talk about this a little bit. Let's come back together. So, um... You may stop reading. Let's discuss this a little bit. I'll make a few comments. Um, so this concept of uh, conditional probability and independent events, they are kind of related. They are kind of related. So in terms of conditional event, in, I'm sorry, in, in terms of conditional probability, it is um, the probability that one thing of course, given that another thing has already occurred. So now with respect to uh, example two on page uh, 614, um, they, they, they are trying to run an analysis. This is a typical parking lot. And in this parking lot, uh, there are uh, a lot of vehicles that are there. Some vehicles are reddish in color, some are white, some are black. And um, and among those vehicles, some, some are cars, some are van, and some are pickup, you see? So you can see two categories, two categories of car, uh, uh, vehicles, car, van, and pickup. Now, within this category, there are also some of it that are red in color, white in color, and uh, black in color. That's what they are just trying. And this is what you see in every parking lot. If you go to any parking lot right now, you will see different kinds of cars, and you will also see different um, colors of vehicles. So they just picked 
about three colors uh, just for illustration purposes. And they also picked about uh, um, three different uh, kinds of vehicles, like a regular car, a van, and a pickup for illustration purposes. So now the probability that um, a car is uh, black, probability that a car is black is, so you have to check the total number of black cars, which is 13, divided by the total vehicles in the parking lot, which is 22. So that's the probability that a car is black. On the other hand, how about the probability that a car is a vehicle is a van and also black? a van and a black. So now you, you need to consider the total van that are black, so which is three, divided by the total vehicles, which is uh, 22. Then you have to also divide it by the probability that a car is black, which is uh, 13 over 22. Invariably, at the end of the day, you are still getting three over 13. So. So this is basically how to analyze some of this stuff. Um, time now is almost 9.50, 9.45. I'm sorry, 9.45. And uh, we have uh, just about 10 minutes to end the class. And there is a little more to read. So here's what we can do. Um, I'm gonna let you have the 10 minutes to fin use it and finish the reading. And then let's go to page, let's go to page, um, the last page. Now look at this last page. I'm going to give you about two minutes to read through this last page. This is where the question is. So I'm going to give you like uh, four questions to answer. Four, four. So I, I want you to select those four questions by yourself. Mr. Yuki, can you please put the, um, the board screen up so I can write the uh, last piece of information down? Yes. So but let, before you. I do that, before I do that, look, this is the page I want to, the last page is page 617. So I want you to select any four questions, any four is fine with me. One, any two, four questions that you want to answer. One, two, three, four. I mean, you can select one, two, three, four. You can also select one, nine, 10 and whatever. As long as it is within this page, any four is fine with me. Select any four questions to answer, okay? And um, uh, let me go back to that page. Can you see it uh, coming? I still see the, the page where we have to read. Okay, uh, then I'm not sharing it correctly. Is it where you want? Yes, thank you very much. Okay. Mr. Yu, are we supposed to divide 16 and 58 to the lowest 10? Yeah, you can uh, simplify it. Simplify it as uh, much as uh, possible. Just simplify it. Simplify it to the lowest common term. Okay, so now here's what I'm asking you to do. I want you to finish reading the document. Ben, then you go to page uh, 617 and answer any four question. All right? So that's what the work is about. Any four questions of our choice? Yes. Any four questions of your choice? Yes. Mr. Yu, can you please go up a little bit? Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So when do you think, uh, when do you want to turn, turn, uh, submit the work? When? 3 6 p.m. What? 3. 6 p.m. Uh, 3, yeah, there's still school at 3 p.m. So I can give 6 p.m., but I don't want late work. I don't mind giving 6 p.m., but I don't want late work. I don't know how many times I have to say this. I can give 6 p.m., but I do not want late submission. This is something you can do within 15 minutes and then get it over with. Why delay? Okay. So let me adjust while you're doing this. Let me adjust the, let me adjust the assignments. 